Welcome. Honoring the traditional territory of the Gabrielinos First Nation who stewarded this land for almost 2,000 years. Leonardo da Vinci said, Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Tonight, over the next 45 minutes, I'm here to present my doctoral thesis, a non-accredited, experimental pilot project exploring the possibilities for permaculture education, including the creation of graduate level degrees. I will share patterns for education at different levels, from one-day intros, to one-year permaculture design certificate courses, to two-year advanced courses, then three to five-year diplomas, and beyond into graduate level. My intention is to highlight some best practices, top tips, do's and don'ts for education in any field from a permaculture design perspective. Included in this presentation and the written thesis that accompanies it are recommendations to the Permaculture Institute and Permaculture Academy for moving forward to build out advanced programs appropriate for these changing times. I dedicate this to my dear mentor, Bill Mollison, who said, there is no other path for us than that of cooperative productivity and community responsibility. Take that path and it will change your life in ways you cannot yet imagine. Grateful also to David Holmgren, who wrote, the more radical our change agenda is, the more simple our starting points need to be. Super grateful to the Permaculture Academy, to Larry and Elijah Santoyo for their core support of this journey. Thanks to the Birdhouse team, Cameron, Jessica, John, and Bella. So honored that you're hosting us here in Hollywood. Props to the original Permaculture Institute, Bill and Lisa Mollison and Tamara Griffiths. Thanks to everyone who's coming to support this event and those that will listen to it afterwards. I appreciate the presence of many special people in my life. J.R.R. Tolkien said, All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. Using a teaching method I learned from Larry called Going Off, I'm going to give a rant. To keep things interesting, I have a series of slides where I direct your attention. I will work to keep this to 45 minutes. To support, write down questions and comments. Feel free to ask me those after or email me, delvin at cosm.org. You could use this opportunity to reflect on your teaching practice, whether formal or informal. How do you facilitate, guide, and share information with others? A short history. My journey started with a permaculture design course and diploma with Bill Mollison. I got funding from the Federal Government of Canada to run a program for youth at risk between the ages of 18 and 30 who were not working or in school. We built permaculture demonstration sites on school grounds and in public places, served the food bank, homeschool association, and did week-long activations in elementary schools throughout our bioregion. The main community service project is documented in my final diploma report. Following this was a five-year master's degree with Bill Mollison, including extensive work in the festival culture, building permaculture demonstration sites, which hosted conferences, galleries, and film festivals. When the Permaculture Institute in Tasmania closed, I did a two-year diploma through Larry Santoyo and Scott Pittman of the Permaculture Institute. It was just before winter solstice 2012, and what I thought would be an ending turned out to be a new beginning when Larry agreed to support me to complete the learning path Bill Mollison set me on. Part one, learning how to teach. During my doctoral study this past seven years, I did 670 hour learning practicum, taking formal classes with permaculture pioneers including seven advanced courses and six teacher trainings, as well as a permaculture design certificate. In this first section of the presentation, I will acknowledge some of my most beloved teachers and mentors from the permaculture pantheon, 
sharing gems of wisdom I learned from them about permaculture education. Thich Nhat Hanh wrote, a true teacher is someone who helps you discover the teacher in yourself. David Holmgren met Bill Mollison in 1974, where he became a mentor for him. I was born in 1975, so I like to think I was born at the beginning. They met in a seminar at the College of Advanced Education. Holmgren was studying a course called Environmental Design. Mollison was teaching in the Psychology Faculty. Holmgren became fascinated by Mollison, who fit his idea of what a modern ecologist should be like. The program Holmgren was taking while he developed permaculture ideas was set up by an architect. It was an early environmental design school. The program was perhaps the most radical experiment in tertiary education in Australian history. It was based on the premise that there is no point in teaching design professionals a specific set of skills because the world is changing so fast that the skills may be irrelevant before they get careers. So the focus was on teaching them how to problem solve and how to think. The program had no fixed curriculum. It featured self-assessment at every level up to the submission of a thesis. Undergraduate and graduate students worked together on projects. Participants could specialize part-time in a field while they had a job in that field. To fund itself and keep fees down, the department functioned as a business consultancy to government and NGOs. As the final course in my doctorate, I went back to Meliodora for a third time to take an advanced course with David Holmgren, Sue Dennett, and Dan Palmer. Holmgren teaches masterfully with a straightforward lecture style. He also leads people through the landscape and teaches along the way like a permaculture natural history guide. While receiving this final transmission and working on this thesis, I was stoked to wear his old hat. In relation to educational design, Holmgren emphasized strategic thinking rather than master planning, seeking to genuinely understand where people are at and how to fulfill their needs in a forward-thinking way. This is his homestead, Meliodora in Hepburn Springs. David acknowledges that permaculture design can be confronting because everyone is their design site's biggest asset and biggest liability. Bill Mollison said, just join with one or two friends to make your way in the confusion. Others will follow and learn. Know when you are too old to stop teaching. Bill loved this dog, Chiquita, who was at its side while he taught in Tasmania. Bill advised, when teaching, always support a concept with an example and give the example as a story wherever you can. A core reader and inspiration for my doctorate is Bill's foundation yearbook of the Permaculture Academy. Bill taught brilliantly with humor, storytelling, and holistic lectures delivered with absolute precision. Part university lecturer, part comedian, part scientist, part wizened tribal elder. This is me and Bill in Stanley, Tasmania, location of his first social permaculture experiment in living and food growing. Bill said, permaculture is information and imagination intensive. If we take the time to read, observe, discuss, and contemplate, we begin to think in terms of multidisciplines. In his autobiography, Travels and Dreams, he describes designers as time scouts, finding places now that will be needed then. This is the first half of a 360 degree view of the Tagari farm on Tasmania. When Bill retired, his top students continued his work, including the extraordinary Larry Santoyo. I cannot thank you enough, Larry, for your support all these years. It's been an epic seven years since the spring of 2012 when we met during Toby Hemingway's permaculture design course in Portland. By the autumn of that year, I brought Larry and Scott Pittman to the Elphinstone Rainforest to offer a teacher training and see my diploma presentation. Here I began this doctoral track. The two-year check-in was done as part of a second teacher training in New Mexico at Synergia Ranch. The next happened at a teacher training on Oahu. Larry Santoyo carries the direct legacy of Bill Mollison and his teachings 
sharing the breadth of Mollison's curriculum and is the truest teacher I have ever seen to Bill's original teaching style and methods. On Oahu, at the interview with me and Rob Herring, Larry Santoyo said, Contemplating what we have learned and carefully designing our own next steps usually includes answering questions which were generated by the process didn't even exist before. The drive to answer these questions can help us to find our own niche. Permaculture design identifies many cycles in time and niches in space, which we inevitably bring ourselves into. Where do I fit and how will I best serve? It was here that I had a life-changing meeting with Elijah Santoyo and got to receive another transmission from Scott Pittman. Scott Pittman said, education needs to be liberated from the shackles of conventionality. He teaches utilizing storytelling and is a traditional elder teaching style, like the chief of a new tribe. Scott wrote in one of our interviews, my primary reason for being part of the permaculture universe is because I think it's the best design system I ever encountered. I was converted in the first class I took and remain a true believer. I am in full agreement. Another of my most profound teachers, mentors, and guides is Rosemary Morrow. I wanted to share a sample from our correspondence this last year so you can get a flavor for what kind of teacher she is and why she became such a deep inspiration for me. She wrote, I've been working in the Solomon Islands and in Southern Europe where unemployment is so high. We could easily develop a new educated peasantry who thrive. I'm just in from nearly three weeks of walking song lines and old roads with no cars at all in the arid lands with Aboriginal people in support of anti-uranium mining on their lands. Walking from 15 to 22 kilometers each day, no web or phone contact at all, sleeping out in swags and cooking on open fires. Interesting things happened. I obtained funding to trial permaculture design courses in refugee camps in Southeast Asia and the Middle East, including recent tropical camps, long-term camps with women refugees, transition camps in Greece, and also Malaysia. The results are very stimulating and show permaculture design courses have a huge amount to offer refugees, NGOs, army, and government managers of the camps. From the point of view of teaching, we had the greatest retention rates of any courses in any of the camps and had waiting lists when we left. The reason for this is content and process. Also, permaculture design meets urgent needs. Here is our class in Greece at Nia Macri. The method most unique to Rosemary is teaching with questions. Her profound questions draw out the learning from within the students who discover the answer through an educational process that is both creative and empowering. Instead of being told the answer to the question, Ro helps students discover the answer through a learning journey. She says, teaching is an exchange, not a delivery. Luby McNamara's teaching style is exploratory. Class planning is often done immediately before class to take into account the specific context of time and location, as well as the learner's needs and capacities. I have learned so much from this incredible teacher. Some of her best practices and top tips include Start and end well. Build trust, especially before being challenging. Offer opportunities for accountability and follow-up. Here we are at her first Applewood site, the landscape that inspired J.R.R. Tolkien to create the Shire. Celebrating the life and legacy of Toby Hemingway. It was an honor to sit on the last weekend of Toby Hemingway's final PDC in Petaluma. Toby taught with the clarity and intelligence of a scientist, the inspirational storytelling of a field guide, and the reverence of an ecologist. A professional teacher and author, Toby continues to be one of the bright shining lights of the permaculture movement. He said to me, do what you love and what brings you alive first. Find a place where your innate abilities are needed. My own personal prayer for this is, send me people I can help then apply permaculture's ethics and principles to what you're doing to shape it into something resilient and regenerative. I first learned from him at Van Dusen Gardens in Vancouver. Another incredible teacher is Robin Clayfield. 
Her teaching style is profoundly creative and based almost entirely in interactive games and activities. Her top tips for education include use participatory processes. Engagement of participants leads to motivation, enjoyment, and increased learning, plus a greater sense of achievement as everyone's input is included and valued. Encourage everyone to use essence when they speak. This helps with focus, ease of understanding and memory, supports time efficiency, and gives everyone a turn to speak. Remind people of this. One of the places I studied with her was at Crystal Waters in Australia, the oldest community designed from permaculture principles. After meeting Robin Francis at a teacher training at the Permaculture Institute of Northern California, I went to her home permaculture site in Nimbin last spring, Jan Bung Gardens, to take an upgraded teacher training. Her style is straightforward and focuses on practical understandings, cultivating real skills for homesteading, and taking care of all the systems you live in. Some of her influential advice to me was, do check your facts and be accurate. Teachers need to have the graciousness to admit that they don't know everything and to be wrong and to move ahead. It's important to check things out and, if questioned or challenged on something, be thankful for the opportunity to double-check sources. Another big do is continuous improvement, constantly doing the best and always doing better next time. Teachers can be updating course materials and resources, accepting feedback as well as refining processes and activities. Graham Bell has also been an influence. He pointed out that people learn best by thinking for themselves and observing what works best. The more you can include practical experience in a course, the more people are going to actually understand it is that you're talking about. This is a more fulfilling way for people to learn. By reconsidering the role of teachers as facilitators, we can get the best out of people by respecting their existing knowledge and wisdom as course members, but also as part of the teaching ability of the group. When they share, we en enhance our own sense of self-worth, increase retention, and learn something new ourselves. We love time in his northern forest garden on the same latitude as Alaska. After visiting Graham, we spent some integrative time on the Isle of Skye. We visited the fairy pools where I proposed. Here is us moments after my proposal to share in a life of learning adventures together. Almost out of time for acknowledging teachers, I'll do a more centralized nod to just a few more that I studied with during the doctorate. Mark Lakeman is a huge inspiration, particularly in relation to my working on placemaking projects, building learning gardens on school grounds and in public places. In an interview with him, he said, one of the most important products of a learning garden is inspiration and motivation. Learning gardens can have a personal social impact, affecting the future choices of anyone that comes into the environment. The goal is to inspire stewardship of the environment, inspiring people to seek opportunities for opening up arable space, depaving or community building, and also a new sense of belonging in a larger culture of people who work and learn with the earth. During an apprenticeship with Starhawk, she asked, how does permaculture take a step forward? How do we make this transition from being on the edges and fringes to putting forth real solutions we have to incredibly difficult problems like climate change? How do we make these problems part of the global conversation? Michael Becker said to me, start today right now. Don't even finish listening to me complete this rant. We have to quit talking about what we want to have happen and start making it happen. There is no perfect place or situation to start this work. Permaculture is not what we do once we find optimal conditions. Permaculture is the path to optimal conditions. Where you are right now with the information you have is the time and place to start. My favorite permaculture site on the world is Orcas Island at the Bullocks Homestead. Sam Bullock said, Think about all the functions of the system and how they interrelate. Use that as a teaching tool. Doug Bullock said, Permaculture is a communication tool to explain to people what we are doing and why we think it's important. During the doctorate, I developed a permaculture design strategy with my team for how to be the most effective student. My hope was to become a professional student in some capacity, but I never quite got to the point of being paid to take classes. 
I made a 100-page permaculture design to describe the strategy in detail, but here's a few highlights of the pattern. Study regularly in person with the most experienced teachers at the best and oldest permaculture sites. Take great notes. Work with a photographer to get photos. Collaborate with a videographer to get video, including interviews with the permaculture teachers. From the video, cut up short micro videos easily shared on social media. Our Vimeo channel, 17,000 people have watched from 136 countries. Transcribe the interviews and turn them into articles to get published in permaculture magazines, like these volumes of Permaculture Design, PIP, Permaculture Magazine International, Permaculture Magazine North America, Communities, and the magazine I am the senior managing editor for with chief editors Alison Gray and Alex Gray, COSM Journal of Visionary Culture. I also make course books, sharing notes, quotes, and photos to empower participants and help the teachers promote future offerings. The course notes also get incorporated into the core curriculum documents for the courses I teach. Photos with quotes in them can be great social media shares. We also did public presentations back in our local community to share the journey and its learning highlights. Part two, teaching in order to learn. I'm so honored to be here at the Birdhouse. Here's part two of the presentation. Some say the best way to learn is to teach. So during the seven year duration of the doctorate, I completed a 2,240 hour teaching practicum. I will share the pattern for formats I designed at each level of education. Intro days, permaculture design certificate courses, advanced courses, diplomas, and graduate level, including a note on roses, thorns, and buds, successes, challenges, and future ideas. A short history. In my previous master's degree, I developed curriculum for all ages, including Waldorf, elementary school, alternative high school, university, elder college, school administrators, teachers, and parent advisory councils. For the doctorate, I turned my attention to more formal levels of permaculture teaching, starting with introductory days. During the past seven years, I delivered 60. These were co-taught with kimchi in British Columbia. They were all free. The days varied from 10 people up to 60 people. I also host intro days at Cosm with Grace out east, which we volunteer to offer, costing $25 to $75 to attend as a fundraiser for the nonprofit organization, Cosm, that we work with. The East Coast is our new home and the next location we are focusing on for our practice. There's interest in permaculture in New York, but we have a long way to go to keep getting consistent attendance. The general pattern has been developed during more than 100 intro days offered over the past 17 years. It looks like this. Put up posters and share them online. Meet with groups at gardens, farms, and forests in the bioregion within a four hour commute from where we live, including ferries. Every location must have a covered space with video capacity and a bathroom available for at least part of the day. Start with videos to allow latecomers to come in without interrupting offering something that rewards people for coming on time. Opening circle includes a name game where everyone talks. This regularly includes Larry's game, Why Should We Let You Live? Core curriculum is shared indoors and outdoors. We share a potluck lunch of organic local food to bond everyone together. Afternoon includes activities, games, and short lectures. End with a closing circle that allows everyone to contribute sharing their name again, as well as highlights of the day. Best practices. We ask for student feedback each time and change our template core curriculum based on this. Utilize many different teaching styles and methods. Successes. Intradays have been a key to attract students to the longer permaculture design certificate courses. The design strategy I developed during the doctorate was to network and connect with nonprofit community groups, schools, and municipal government bodies. They then present the day by providing a free space and helping to promote to their network. We found one such group in many of the different cities or towns within a four-hour drive, 
then we would do one free intro day there each year. Challenge? Since it's a free day, there's a huge amount of attrition with easily up to 50% of signups not showing up day of. Over a thousand people participated in my intro days during the course of the doctorate. There's a 74 page design document with full patterns and details. Many of these classes culminated in a design charrette, a short group process for designing a site. Inspired by a make your own elements game I learned from Michael Becker, this set of small cards features elements commonly found in permaculture systems. For use by teachers and students, designers and consultants, this helps people gamify their design process with movable elements from permaculture gardens and farms. We incorporate figurines, plaster scene, and all manner of markers to the design. Recently, I made a tabletop edition of even tinier cards. We also began to add elements from a tropical and dryland environment. There are a series of large three by eight foot maps that work for up to 30 people at a time. We encourage people using the game around the world to make their own base map for their local area. The next level design is permaculture design certificate courses. I delivered 16 during the doctorate. Each one was 16 months long. These courses on the West Coast were co-taught with kimchi. Those on the East Coast are co-taught with grace. The pattern for this has evolved over 17 years and 27 permaculture design courses that I've taught since starting out. The goal is offering a low cost, ultra flexible course catering to all different learning styles and people of all different educational backgrounds. Intended to be dynamic, engaging, interactive, experiential, and ultimately transformative. We ask our participants for a lot of feedback. Immediately after each class, we also reflect with a roses, thorns, and buds analysis about what went well, what was challenging, and what we would do differently. Our core curriculum book gets updated based on these observations. The class is super flexible and low cost. Participants can make up missed classes at no additional cost with no time limit to complete the certification. We visit different sites each time, including ancient forests, farms, gardens, woodlands, and homesteads, as well as ethical businesses and suburban sites. Some locations we do once a season in all four seasons to observe annual patterns. There is work to be done outside of class for those wanting a certificate, including books to read. There are three questions per month to answer. These are not handed in or marked. There's a year-long mapping project. Everyone has two months to get oriented and spends a full year observing a site. This could be land, building, business, project, or practice. The last two months are spent on the design project to apply permaculture and everything learned in the course to the site that was being mapped. Every day we do food preservation techniques and medicine making. Best practices? Meet up at 11 a.m. to allow people time to commute up to five hours away from surrounding area. We welcome clarifying questions, but save general questions until breaks to stay on track with the core curriculum. We consider our courses to be like field schools where people learn in the field instead of in classrooms. This is us in Prince Rupert in a course through Northwest Community College co-taught with Ken Shaw, who brought our class in for a formal presentation to the mayor and city council on permaculturing the city and its economy over the coming years. Successes. The course uplifts many people to make major changes in their lives and to live closer to their values. Numerous participants purchase new properties and begin to permaculture them during the course. Years later, these became classrooms we bring students to. Challenges. The life attrition for the 16-month program is huge. Some people spend two or three years before getting a certificate, and many who miss classes lose momentum and disappear into their lives. Likely one of the hardest permaculture design certificate courses to graduate that's ever been offered. Maybe a third of those who take my classes eventually finish and get certified. Hundreds of people participated in the 16 PDCs offered during the doctorate. Here's the other half of the 360 degree view of Tagari in Tasmania. Bill Mollison said, if you think you can and you want to teach after completing a PDC, 
then go and do it. I am creating tools to help support people to just get out there and teach. My design for permaculture design certificates is online, a free download like all my media. These past 17 years, with a lot of help from my team, mentors, and teachers, I've been working on a textbook to share the core curriculum of permaculture design. Like Canadian Coles Notes or American Cliff Notes, this is a concise summary of the core individual points that make up a full PDC. It's a free download online. The new edition will be a 400-page hardbound textbook sharing all the core chapters of the permaculture design course. I'm finalizing the new version now, but need to raise $9,000 to print it. If you know anyone who might want to support this initiative, let me know. Kim Chi helped turn this book into a thousand card deck for use in our classes. The next level is advanced permaculture. During the doctorate, I facilitated two 30 month long advanced design courses and designed an online program. I also co-taught an advanced design course with my mentor, Luby McNamara, for five days. This was the last class I taught as part of this doctoral path. We started with an evening program at Van Dusen in Vancouver. There was a great turnout and we made more money for a single day than I'd ever made from permaculture before. After never teaching for more than four days in a row, this five-day advanced course was radically transformative and a climax to my doctoral study. We rented the Rolling Earth Retreat Center in the Elphinstone Rainforest. It was the same location as the teacher training in 2012 I set up for Larry Santoyo and Scott Pittman that started this doctoral journey. Grace worked around the clock to prepare fine dining level food, almost entirely local and organic from farms in our community. The course was totally radical, exploring new territory in permaculture. Luby McNamara shared her synthesis of permaculture design principles into new design methods for practicing holistic and emergent design, what she calls cultural emergence. A few of the principles of cultural emergence are be attentive to timing. Emergence happens in relationship. Be attentive to shifts and opportunities. Allow for the possibility of the seemingly impossible. The pattern for the 30-month program was based on creating a low-impact, low-commitment, social permaculture course to support anyone who'd completed a PDC to be able to share and learn with peers. I hosted optional in-person meetups once a season at different permaculture demonstration sites and ancient growth forest locations within a five-hour drive of where I lived. Meetups were just once a season to allow people to participate from much further afield. Daily routines followed the same pattern as the permaculture design certificate, except there was no fixed curriculum. I share curriculum from advanced courses and teacher trainings I have taken, host micro film festivals sharing short video clips from recent permaculture related media, tour permaculture sites led by a guest teacher who lives at that site. Time is provided for participants to facilitate interactive activities, discussions, and presentations. The program functions as a teacher training, building confidence, competence, and capacity for people to learn, teach, mentor, and successfully get along with other people. For an advanced certificate, people have to read eight books, do a permaculture map design and application for a project over a two-year period, and make a community green map. Best practices. The course is driven by participants' passion and interest. Low commitment. Everything is optional. Encourages cultivation of hard skills and lifelong learning. Successes. As people left, I welcome new people into the program to keep the numbers and momentum up. It served as a support group for people to stay connected and get uplifted by people who were truly interested in what they had been doing in their permaculture practice. Challenges, very small class sizes, not enough structure for some, large attrition of people as the program stretched over two and a half years, people got married or divorced, lost and gained jobs, had children and moved to new places. 30 people took the advanced courses during the doctorate. Some did the courses by distance from Australia, Europe and South America. I made a design for this as well. 
Inspired by Robin Clayfield's Permaculture Principles card game, another final doctoral project included compiling 230 core concepts into a large deck, which is a free download online that shares some of the gems of all my learning. This can help support learning, teaching, designing, consulting, and mentorship practices. With Grace's help, we started working with a permaculture illustrator I met last year in Australia, Brenna Quinlan. Working with Alexa Spatty, the designer at Cosm, enabled us to enter into a new era for our offerings and finalize this project after seven years in development. The deck includes a long list of ethical principles, attitudinal principles, strategic principles, design principles, and design methods. The seven ways to think differently cards based on Luby McNamara's work are currently available in Serbian, Hebrew, and 14 other languages as free downloads at printable resolution. We ran a Kickstarter to print 500 decks and gifted them out to the contributing teachers and the board of directors at many of the world's permaculture institutes. Since the cards came uncollated, you can imagine the backbreaking work of collating hundreds of 230 card decks. Although we went way over budget, it looks like we will break even when the final decks are sold. The next step is to raise the $9,000 to reprint the deck with a larger font and a better box and a bunch of new cards. If you know anyone who's interested in funding this project, please let me know. I also run a three to five year diploma mentorship program which supports people to go through the Permaculture Institute Diploma Program. This suits those that want to practice permaculture professionally in their lives in any capacity. Document that work while having some structure, accountability, and support. The pattern of the program so far has been create an ever-changing learning plan. Document your work, what you did, what you learned, and how it relates to permaculture design. Take a second PDC, do an advanced permaculture design course. Make a series of applied designs for land projects and people projects. Summarize learning into a final 50-page diploma report. Best practices? Resource emails go out every month or two. Check-ins by email, phone, Skype, or in person are recommended to happen every month or two. Participants choose a feature project to focus their work and documentation on. Successes? Flexible to be done where the participants live in the context and timing of their own lives. Supports participants to design their right livelihood and achieve financial success. Helps people to apply permaculture to their own lives, landscapes, and livelihoods and get a personally empowering and resume boosting recognition for doing so. Gives structure for people to develop real skills so they are increasingly confident in doing practical hands-on work. Encourages participation in community projects which benefit the human and ecological community. Challenges. Three to five years is such a long time. Attrition is high. Documentation is the biggest challenge for almost everyone in the program. It takes great discipline to take five to ten minutes after each significant life event, or part of a day every month, or a full day every season, to document while things are fresh. Luby McNamara shared this unlock. Rather than the diploma being the extra thing on top of everything else, imagine that with everything you already have going on, you have three bowls that you need to carry at the same time. Instead of the diploma being an extra bowl, think of the diploma process as the tray that then enables you to carry more. It's a supportive mechanism for you that reinforces your pathway as a permaculture designer. I designed a 100-page book comparing and contrasting all the English permaculture diploma programs in the world and including interviews with directors and staff. During the doctorate, I've had 24 people in my program, six of them have completed, nine are still working to completion, and nine did not complete. A number of diploma participants have gone on to buy new land or retrofit where they lived in exceptional ways for energy efficiency, food growing, generating income, and to host classes. One exceptional story involves Paul Myers, who's become a dear friend, during the PDC, he turned his suburban lot into one of the best suburban permaculture design sites. It hosted my intros, PDCs, and advanced gatherings. For his three-year diploma, Paul did a design and implementation for an eight-acre permaculture farm site. 
Here the design charrette map we used with all the intro days, PDC groups, and advanced gatherings we hosted there. The site included a successful farm gate, serving the local community with fruits and vegetables, as well as an on-demand harvest-to-order CSA, community-supported agriculture hub, which connected local farms to provide organic local meat, dairy, vegetables, fruits, nuts, and preserves. I called this permaculture site my home and classroom for a year and was immersed into farm life. In exchange for my stay, I led a volunteer day once a month across the growing season. This free program started strong, but petered out to just a few. We did an opening circle, a session of work, a potluck lunch, a tour of the farm, a second session of work, then a closing circle. People were invited to come and go as they pleased, and some just dropped in for half the day. This did generate hundreds of hours of great farm labor doing practical things that involved a lot of hands-on learning like planting seeds, transplanting starts, harvesting, making living willow fences, and doing broad-scale wire fencing. Paul produced an epic level final diploma report with map and design, which is available online. I also supported him to create a permaculture-infused book of musings on life as a permaculture farmer called The Ground of Our Being, which was printed and is currently available for purchase. In this book he wrote, we are learners, apprentices of life and the land, said St. Augustine, Solvator Umbalando. It is solved by walking. The question of how to live by that vision are resolved when we just begin to step forward. In the everyday doing of the work that grows slowly but inexorably, it is there that we learn. During a recent time in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, in the heart of Amish territory, I put together a radical new proposal for a possible future redesign of the diploma program. This process has been guided, informed, and collaborated with my permaculture hero, Jason Gearhart, the current director of the Permaculture Institute. Inspired by the original diploma of Bill Mollison and Rosemary Morrow, this is a diploma for the 99%, a people's diploma. Accessible, affordable, and achievable for any permaculture design course graduate. It offers support to practice permaculture in more effective ways in people's lives, landscapes, and livelihoods, and is based on the core values of care and service. Rosemary Morrow has been mentoring me on this project. She recently wrote to me and said, the diploma does not require mentorship, but it acknowledges that the work done has contributed something of value. Considering what the diploma process can offer people in their designs is a foundation for going forward. It gives participants the professional expertise to communicate about who they are and what they have done. This will be a great help in getting jobs, grants, educational access, and other opportunities. I like very much what you have done. It is very necessary. I've sent a copy of the permaculture graduates in Kabul who want to start an institute of permaculture and nonviolence. They might also like it in Malaysia who are hoping to do something similar. I think you have a good model to launch it at people who are marginalized, and I think who need it most. Thich Nhat Hanh wrote, my actions are my only true belongings. My feature project for the doctorate was spending over 5,700 hours mapping, designing, and implementing an educational site. Over 14 years, including the first five years of the doctorate, I created the Heart Gardens, a community permaculture demonstration site in the downtown of my tiny coastal rainforest village. Half a block from the Pacific Ocean, nestled into perhaps the most moderate climate for Canada, protected from the open ocean by the vastness of Vancouver Island. 
It's a 45 minute drive up a logging road from ancient growth rainforest. This was the site of my initiative, Village Repair, permaculture design maquettes for small towns and villages. Extensive design development and maintenance was done, including a pathways project on surrounding public lands in cooperation with the Sunshine Coast Regional District Government. I'm ever grateful to the best landowner bosses ever, the Van Cleeks, for my job. Transforming the gravel brambles of our 1.2 acre downtown business district using permaculture and placemaking. With a team, I helped build pathways and seating. Framed parking areas and built 64 gardens. As a right livelihood income during the doctorate, I planted 372 species of functional, hardy, cool climate, perennial food, medicine, and tool plants, including 187 species of plants with a history of use by the coastal first peoples. It was a life ship of genetic material for the community. I maintained it all myself, by hand, including only hand watering. Maps locate every plant on site and list animals. Sector analysis included monthly sun charts. Harvests of flowers, leaves, fruit, vegetables, roots, and seeds have been documented in the calendar of monthly harvests for each month of the year. Gardens were designed for heavy wear and tear, including kids, dogs, summer drought, winter snow, and freezes. An eco-education center shared free seeds and resources. We also hosted a weekly farmer's market. During the doctorate, I created 400 page books for this map design and implementation project. I used it as a classroom for intro days and a four season classroom for permaculture design classes, advanced courses and diploma meetups. And more importantly, as a working classroom for locals and visitors that came from all over the world. After 10 years of volunteering at COSM, a nonprofit arts organization in New York, I am now married and moved to New York as a full-time volunteer, serving on the board of directors in many capacities, including helping with media and project management. This is a retreat center and B&B, including 40 acres of woods and newly renovated buildings, inviting the contemplation of art and nature, providing a center for events encouraging creativity. I'm becoming increasingly involved in the ongoing design and care of the land and the organization that stewards it. After three years of work, we released the new vision plan for the organization, which is available online. Considerable map and design work has been condensed into a 100-page design book, which also includes extensive design ideas collected at charrettes done on classes on site. The last permaculture design course included eight members of COSM senior staff and featured the directors of the organization as guest teachers and design clients. A new permaculture design course meeting two days per season will include many more of the senior staff. Graduate level permaculture is the new territory that I'm exploring in a larger context. This doctoral work has really been a pilot project designing a learning pathway for a permaculture doctorate that others could do. The pattern I see for graduate programs would be mentorship, perhaps rolling out of the box, pay-as-you-go, self-directed and participant-driven, have a well-defined feature project, include taking a number of classes from experts, do a number of practically applied designs in different contexts, involve apprenticeships and practicums, include teaching, whether formal or informal, feature a life design to make sure it's holistic. In the Academy Yearbook, Bill Mawson said, postgraduate degrees call for careful work and pre-planning, wide research, careful expression, clear illustrations, and correct referencing. These are normally 20 to 100 pages typed. Lean work, no waffle or general opinions is appreciated, to the extent that no adjectives should be used or unsupported statements offered. That may be extreme, but I did keep it to less than 100 pages. The yearbook says, a doctoral degree is normally three years. For all postgraduate degrees, find a supervisor and two external examiners. Examiners look for evidence of good comprehension in the field chosen, key references consulted, and good research planning, as well as excellent expression and clarity. At doctoral level, evidence of original thought and clear results should be the aim. 
I did have the two doctors I know in the permaculture movement read the thesis, give feedback, advise, and support. Dr. Carrie Shiverals and Dr. Dan Palmer. It was also read with feedback from Rosemary Morrow, Luby McNamara, and Jason Gearhart. As a finale, I did a design for teaching. I also created a textbook, a collection of best practices and top tips for teaching, including quotes and interviews with permaculture pioneers who ran permaculture teacher training courses. This will be incorporated with the permaculture design notes for the upcoming textbook. My website also shares 500 pages of documentation reports that happened over the course of the doctorate. Rosemary Morrow said, there is nothing to do except deepening your permaculture knowledge forever. I recently helped her get her book available as a free download and from an on-demand printer in North America. Bill Mollison said, it is clear that what is proposed here is a serious undertaking, not normally achievable by unsupported people. Therefore, we must do it barehanded going forward with all intellect, goodwill, and selflessness, but above all with a deadly persistence until the task is over. The need for permaculture to branch out, transform, and adapt to the changing world of education is certain. Whether it integrates into the larger existing curriculums and becomes invisible, or carves its own place as a unique cross-discipline approach to design and pattern literacy, permaculture holds keys to help unlock the next level of education in the movement to hashtag save planet earth. Extra thanks for exceptional support from my dearly departed mother, Nancy, also my father, Frank, as well as my new stepmom Stephanie and stepfather, Scott, my beloved wife and best friend, Grace, my profound mentors and teachers, Alex Gray and Allison Gray for supporting me so exceptionally along life's learning adventures it is with them and their nonprofit organization that I'm dedicating my career years and the next level of my life. And most of all to Larry Santoyo for believing in me and supporting me along this learning journey. We'll close with a quote from David Orr. What can educators do to foster real intelligence? We can attempt to teach the things that one might imagine the earth would teach us. Silence, humility, holiness, connectedness, courtesy, beauty, celebration, giving, restoration, obligation, and wildness. Thanks so much. <laughs>